I've mentioned on a couple of videos before how I'm a Bucks fan, and honestly, one of the biggest disappointments this offseason was losing Kwan Alexander. Obviously, it makes sense, as there's no way Tampa Bay could afford to give him that big of a contract. However, it definitely is disappointing, as he's such a likable guy. I mean, he's a guy who was drafted in the fourth round, and has tons of reports of him working as hard as anybody in the league. Apparently, he's one of the most hardworking guys you will ever meet. He was always the first guy to show up in the locker room, and he absolutely worked to earn himself one of the biggest contracts in the league. So, in my opinion, it's a great success story of showing that what you can do by working hard. Even though he is undersized, and even though he was drafted late, he's turned himself into a Pro Bowl type linebacker, and I think that's very admirable. But of course, Harburg only does so much, and let's talk about how Quan Alexander could help this 49ers football team. He definitely has his pros and cons as a player, and I think his biggest pro and biggest con are both going to be shown on this play. If we take a look at this play, it's basically going to be a zone blocking scheme where all of New Orleans' blockers are going to be going to the right side of the screen. Basically what this means is that Kamara doesn't have a designed hole where he's supposed to run through. He's instead supposed to try to find a hole that he likes and run through that one. This now makes things slightly more difficult for the linebackers who are in charge of stopping the run, as now there's no way to read the offensive line to try to figure out what hole the halfback is going to be running through, since the offensive line don't even know what hole the halfback is going to be running through. But despite that, Kwan is going to do a very good job of figuring out where Kamara is and getting right into his area. So that's the good side of Kwan. He's very alert and very aware. However, there's then the bad side of Kwan, and he isn't the best tackler. As I mentioned before, he is undersized, and if you take a look, he does make the tackle here. However, he allows Kamara to get several more yards that other players wouldn't have allowed Kamara to get. If you take a look, this is the blocking concept that New Orleans is going to be running. And if you notice, they actually don't have Kwan Alexander blocked on this play. They're going to just double team an interior lineman, and everyone else has one-on-one -on -one matchups, meaning Alexander has free range to try to get to Kamara. And he's going to do a very good job of getting the Camaro right at that line of scrimmage, which could be a very good thing for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. However, the problem is, he isn't quite able to make the tackle, and Kamara is able to get into the end zone for a touchdown. This again shows both sides of the Quan Alexander coin here. He does a very good job of realizing where Kamara is running and getting to Kamara, but he just can't quite make the tackle. Kamara never would have gotten 90 yards on either of these plays. The most he would have gotten is 5 or 6 on both of them, because Alexander did make the tackle. He just wasn't able to make the tackle right at the point of contact. While Alexander has his flaws in terms of tackling, it's worth mentioning that he grew up playing running back, and you can actually definitely see it when watching him play. Play, as he has a great job of finding these gaps. On this one, for example, it's going to be a zone blocking scheme, and Joe McCoy is going to do a very good job on this play. He's going to end up squeezing by Pittsburgh's right guard and right tackle, which now allow him to disrupt things mightily. If you notice, he's basically almost on Roethlisberger by the time Roethlisberger is trying to hand the ball off. However, of course, this isn't a video about Gerald McCoy. This is a video about Quan Alexander. And the reason I'm showing this is because now, take a look at that huge gap on the right side of the screen. Sometimes creating a great disruption like McCoy did here can actually turn into a disadvantage if they can get the handoff through, as it can now create a huge hole. However, Alexander notices all this and is going to actually run to clog up that hole. Of course, it was a great play from McCoy, but it was also a very alert play by Quan Alexander, but it really just goes to show how he can use his experience as a former running back and use his experience as just being a smart linebacker to realize where the gaps could be and where he should run to try to stop the run. So it's worth mentioning that while tackling is a bit of an issue for Alexander, he definitely is a valuable asset in the running game. Really, the only area I would say he struggles is in coverage. So this play, for example, the way it's going to work is it's a cover 2 zone, and Tampa Bay has a shadow on a receiver, and the receiver who is getting shadowed is actually going to run that route to the bottom half of the screen. This means that in theory, they can force the Buccaneer who's guarding the flat to have to run deep, and then they can simply throw it to the halfback underneath. Typically, this play wouldn't actually work out too well, as there is a Buccaneer's defensive back who's staying focused on that receiver, meaning that the Buccaneer who's in charge of guarding the flat should know that and should just make sure he guards the flat and not stay too far back to guard that receiver. However, he's going to end up running deep anyways, meaning that this play is still actually going to work out negatively for Tampa Bay. So now at this point, the Saints halfback can simply just run to the bottom half of the screen, and Quan Alexander is actually doing a fine job in this play of making sure he's in his zone. But next thing he knows, he looks over and realizes that there's nobody in the zone next to him either, meaning that there's now a Saint completely wide open. He has to then run full speed down to try to make a tackle, and he actually isn't able to make the tackle at midfield. Which, you know, again, I think it is fair to say that the second highest paid inside linebacker should be able to make this tackle. However, I also think it's fair to say that this is not his fault at all. Basically, what happened here is Alexander didn't make a bad play, he just failed to make a great play. 
So I'm not going to crucify him, however this next play is probably a worse example of him not being able to really make a play. This is a unique play design drawn up by Mike Smith, it's actually kind of a questionable one, I don't really like this play design at all actually. What he's going to do is basically run a cover 2 zone, but it's really different as he has man coverage both on the bottom half of the screen. This now basically means that because they have man coverage on both of those receivers down at the bottom of the screen, that they're just going to hope that no one is actually running 2 to flat on the bottom half of the screen. But that's not really what I'm talking about, really the key to this play is what's happening right here. Pittsburgh has a receiver running a curl route that should be right in between that gap in coverage in the middle of the screen. However, take a look at what Alexander is going to do here. Alexander is telling Levante David, move up to the top half of the screen. He wants Levante David to be higher up to the top half of the screen. But I actually think that that was a mistake, as now Levante David is higher up, and now Quan Alexander has no choice but to be in charge of covering that Steelers receiver. But he also can't just turn around and start playing man coverage, because there is still a Steeler who's in that flat on the bottom half of the screen that Roethlisberger could easily throw to. Also, Alexander does have to be aware of a potential Roethlisberger run, and so Roethlisberger is able to complete the pass and able to pick up a decent gain. In my personal opinion, this is just an example of a defensive coordinator not putting his player in position to succeed. You have a linebacker who's good at stopping the run, but can sometimes struggle in pass coverage. So why give him more responsibilities in the passing game? Why run a weird play like that where you have nobody in charge of covering the flat, where now Alexander has plenty of things to focus on, and he can't quite make the play that he would have liked to make? So is it a flaw in Alexander's game? I think so, yes. But is it a problem that I could see being a much less minimized now that he's away from that terrible Tampa Bay defensive coaching staff that they had last season? I would say so, yes. So I've already mentioned Quan Alexander is not the best tackler, but still can be very effective in the running game, and also isn't the best in coverage, but a lot of that might be coaching. So now there's another thing I want to talk about, and this play will be a good example of it. Alexander is going to be blitzing on this play, and his assignment is basically just to run straight up the middle. However, that's good news for Pittsburgh, as their run is actually going to be right over there. So at this point, Alexander should be completely taken out of the play. I mean, he's getting blocked, and the run is going completely away from him. However, he's very aware of what's going on, and he's basically just going to run as fast as he can to the top half of the screen. While he can struggle in more of these traditional plays, I think in some of these less traditional plays, he can absolutely thrive. I mean, the reality is, he's an incredibly smart player, and he's one of the most hardworking players you will ever see. I mean, this guy gives 110% every play, and that's kind of what Tampa Bay fans love about him, is the fact that he would play so hard on every snap. This next play is another very good example of him doing just that. As you see, it's going to be a pretty basic cover 3 zone. So now the ball has been snapped and the play is taking a little bit of time to develop, meaning that while Alexander is in charge of covering that middle of the field, this now means that because the play has been going on for so long, there is going to be a receiver past him and there is now going to be a pretty big gap in between him and the safety behind him. But one thing worth noting is there is no Panther in that middle of the field where Alexander is in charge of covering. So this gives him free range to run deep as he is expecting a pass to be deep. The ball ends up getting knocked away and into the arms of Quan Alexander who makes an interception and then is able to run it and return it for a lot of yards. So is this a fluky play? I mean, sure, more often than not, the ball isn't going to get knocked into Quan Alexander's arms. However, also more often than not, a linebacker isn't going to do as good of a job as Alexander did of rushing back and being able to make that interception by getting in position to just try to make a play. Not only was he smart enough to realize that he should probably break deep, but he was also fast enough to get there quickly and be in position to make that interception. Speed is probably his best physical attribute, and it can really help defensive coordinators game plan for him. Like on this play, for example, what Tampa Bay is going to actually do here is they are going to have a 5-man rush, but instead of having the 5 men on the line rush, they're going to have a linebacker drop back in the coverage to be in charge of guarding that tight end, and then it will have the 4 other players on the line rush, which now means that they're not expecting Quan Alexander to rush the passer, and he could get by completely unblocked. And Nick Foles is actually a very smart player and realized all this very quickly, so he tried to quickly get the ball out. But Quan Alexander was just a little bit faster, and he was actually able to get the Nick Foles, and that play was actually ruled a fumble, so that was a very good play by Quan Alexander, and it really benefited the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's not a perfect player, but let's be honest, most players aren't. And did the 49ers overpay for him? I mean, yeah, they did, but at the same time, they have the cap space, so when you're in this situation, why not overpay for a couple of players to get some talented players on your team? And I absolutely do think that Alexander being on the 49ers will be a huge benefit to the 49ers. I really do feel like last season, they had a lack of linebackers who had a tendency to get into the play. Like, take this one for example. San Francisco is running a cover one hole, and what the Chiefs are going to do here is simply just send their right guard up to make a block on a linebacker, and then going to send their halfback out to the top half of the screen. 
It works out very well, and the Chiefs are able to easily get the first down, but that's not what I'm going to talk about. Instead, what I'm going to talk about is take a look at what happens right here. The 49ers now have a linebacker and a safety in position to try to be making a play. However, neither one of them ends up making a great tackle on this one. They were eventually able to slow him down and not allow a touchdown. However, they gave up a ton of yards, and to me, I think this just goes to show how Quan Alexander could help the team, even though he's not the best tackler. I mean, even if he missed the tackle, at least he would have missed the tackle five yards earlier in the field, and then they would have been able to stop the guy, in theory, five yards further away from the end zone. But one of the things, too, is I think part of the reason why Alexander misses so many tackles is just because he's in so many plays. He runs around and gets into so many different types of plays that he is going to end up missing more tackles than someone who maybe is as good of a tackler as him, but doesn't have a tendency to get into the play as often. Basically, what my point is, is not that Quan Alexander wouldn't make a mistake like this. It's the fact that he absolutely does make mistakes like this. That's his weakness. But honestly, if you're the 49ers and you already have this part of your game being a weakness, at least with Alexander, he can now benefit you in so much other ways. When you're signing a free agent, oftentimes it's not necessarily how much value does that guy have, but it's how much value would he bring to your team. I mean, just for example, if we say Aaron Rodgers is worth $30 million, that doesn't mean that the Chiefs should go out and pay him $30 million because they already have Patrick Mahomes, so the marginal gain wouldn't be too much. But the Dolphins going out and paying him $30 million would absolutely be a good move because that would give them a huge upgrade. So Alexander might not be that huge an upgrade for some teams, he definitely is a huge upgrade for a team that needs linebackers like the 49ers do. I do think it's actually worth mentioning that despite San Francisco not necessarily having the best defense, they were actually 14th best at stopping the run last year. And while some people might say, well that's probably because other teams passed it so much, that's actually not true at all, as they were actually 7th best in rushes per attempt last season. And that's even more impressive when you factor in the fact that they played against the Rams and Seahawks twice last season. So when you're already good at something, why not try to be great at it? And that's what Alexander going to the 49ers could actually be. Like here's an example of how Quan Alexander could have helped them. As you see, it's a zone blocking concept to the right side of the screen. At this point, an interior lineman is doing a very good job of winning his one-on-one -on -one matchup, which now means that really what the middle linebacker should do on this play is run to the right side of the screen. This would now force Gurley to have to run to the left side of the screen, and since there is a 49er who's doing a very good job of winning his one-on-one -on -one matchup, that means that the Rams wouldn't pick up many yards. However, that doesn't end up being what happens as he ends up running to the left side of the screen, which now allow Gurley to simply just run by him. It results in a touchdown, and it's not a garbage play by any means. However, it is a play that Quan Alexander probably wouldn't have made. I mean, he's a very smart player and he probably would have been able to be aware of this situation and at least not allow there to be a touchdown. I do think Alexander will be a solid benefit to that San Francisco 49ers team. Is he a bit overpaid? Yes, but you have to overpay for guys in free agency and the reality is you can't afford to pay some stars in the NFL. While I do think it is silly to attribute team wins to an individual player's success, I do think it's interesting in Quan Alexander's case. In his four seasons with Tampa Bay, in the games they played, they went 23 and 28, which of course isn't anything too crazy. I mean, it's not even 500, it's a little bit below 500. However, in the 13 games he missed, they ended up going 2 and 11. Clearly, in his time in Tampa Bay, he was the heart and soul of that defense, and now let's see if he can be the heart and soul of the San Francisco defense.